Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am just off from the podium of the third committee of the General Assembly where I presented my latest report on the promotion and protection of human rights while countering terrorism, and it was debated by the delegations. Um, as you know, my mandate has a long title, Special Rapporteur on the Promotion and Protection of Human Rights and found Fundamental Freedoms while countering terrorism. And uh, it is a standard practice, at least for me, that annually I write two thematic reports and present one of them here in New York to the General Assembly, the other one uh, to the Human Rights Council in Geneva. Currently, I am working on a right to privacy report, which will be submitted soon to the Human Rights Council and discussed probably in March of next year. But here in New York, I was uh, presenting a report on the uh, impact of counterterrorism measures on uh, gender seen from a human rights perspective. The background of choosing this topic is that uh, when the Human Rights Council in December 2007 renewed the mandate of the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and Counterterrorism, it added a line, line to the previous existing description of the mandate saying that the Special Rapporteur should integrate a gender perspective into his or her work. That was a standard element in that round of reviewing Special Procedures mandates and it was also added to the mandate of the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and Counterterrorism where one of course may ask how relevant is the gender perspective. I have done my best and in the current report now addressed a number of gender issues. It was not totally new because uh, I can draw upon earlier reports and practice under my mandate where I have in fact addressed already gender issues. Uh, for example, in a mission report uh, concerning mission to Israel including visits to the occupied Palestinian territory in 2007, I address the particular forms of hardship that Palestinian women encounter through the construction of the Israeli wall or barrier into the occupied Palestinian territories. It can be highlighted, for instance, access to hospital facilities for the delivery of a child, which can be obstructed by the wall, but there are many other forms of such hardship. Secondly, in my mission report on uh, the U.S. in 2007, as well as a thematic report on uh, uh, counterterrorism measures and refugee law, I have dealt with the question of uh, tightening immigration controls and rejection as asylum seekers on account of so-called material support to terrorism. This often targets women, including in situations when terrorists have uh, forced women to provide shelter, food or sexual services upon gunpoint. Then when they manage to flee and seek refuge in another country, they are suddenly confronted with an accusation of providing material support to terrorism. Third example, one of my earlier reports deals with uh, the questions of profiling of terrorists and uh, suicide terrorism as a particular form of terrorism. There I identify the risk that women fall double victims of such profiling practices. First because terrorist organizations in order to avoid the profile of authorities may force women or recruit women to become a new wave of suicide bombers. And secondly, when states detect this, they may then target women or specific groups of women such as pregnant women as perceived suicide bombers because of how they dress and look. Fourth and final example, I had a previous thematic report on economic, social and cultural rights in the fight against terrorism. And there I addressed the question how systematically um, promoting the enjoyment by women of economic, social, and cultural rights is one way to build societies without terrorism through a long-term strategic perspective. This was earlier piecemeal work and uh, now I was uh, of the opinion that it is pertinent to devote one of my thematic reports to a comprehensive assessment of the gender impact of counterterrorism measures. 
that was done partly through an expert consultation here in New York uh, in March of this year and I acknowledge uh, my thanks to three, my debt to three universities, my employer, the European University Institute in Florence, who has given me freedom to engage in this unpaid UN work. Uh, my former university, Obo Academy University, who uh, raised funds for the expert consultation, and then New York University, which hosted it and provided a, an excellent team of research assistants to prepare the ground for the report. The report has become a subject of controversy and some media coverage uh, because of being somewhat provocative or radical. The radical dimension of this particular report that it goes beyond focusing merely on human rights and of women when dealing with the notion of gender. Still, the bulk of the report deals with the effect of counter-terrorism measures upon women and women's rights, but nevertheless, I am addressing questions such as how sexual minorities, including gays, lesbians, and transgender persons, face particular hardship due to either insensitive or, in worst case, maliciously targeted counter-terrorism measures. Or another matter is how interrogation of male terrorism suspects alarmingly often makes use of torture methods that utilize human sexuality, including through rape, forced homosexuality, and humiliation related to homophobic fears. This dimension of the report deals with the question of gender in relation to the, uh, to the uh, male uh, detainees who overwhelmingly are uh, those that are terrorism suspects. There are no less than 17 recommendations addressed to states at the end of the report. I don't want to run through those recommendations. Uh, just highlight them by uh, mentioning five. Uh, states should work more to the protection and promotion of human rights of victims of terrorism, and here the reparation schemes should address the gender dimension of uh, uh, hardship faced by victims of terrorism, for instance because women face particular forms of abuse by terrorist groups. Secondly, states must stop detaining women and children for the purpose of producing information on the whereabouts of male family members suspected of terrorism. Thirdly, torture and other inhuman treatment must be prevented, investigated and punished, also when it happens in the name of countering terrorism and targets persons for their sexual orientation or gender identity or utilizes homophobia in the selection of torture methods. Uh, fourthly, victims of uh, gender-based persecution, including by terrorist groups, should be granted a asylum and entry into countries and never fall victims of the notion of material support to terrorism. And finally, the fifth example of recommendations to states is that, uh, in my view, gender diversity, including different experiences of men and women, as well as of persons belonging to sexual minorities, should be seen as a resource in the fight against terrorism, contributing to a design of counterterrorism measures that both is in compliance with human rights and ultimately is most effective in combating terrorism. Besides uh, those 17 recommendations to states, my report also has uh, four recommendations to United Nations bodies, systematic inclusion of a gender dimension into the human rights assessment of counterterrorism measures by special procedures of the Human Rights Council and by the human rights treaty bodies. Specifically, the Committee for the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, CEDO, should include in its analysis of state party reports the question of uh, effect of counterterrorism measures upon women. Thirdly, here in New York, the counterterrorism bodies and entities of the UN should uh, take 
make explicit, take explicit account of gender as a relevant human rights concern. This relates to the Counterterrorism Committee of the Security Council, the Counterterrorism Executive Directorate, and the Counterterrorism Implementation Task Force. There's been a lot of progress in acknowledging that uh, terrorism can most effectively be fought with compliance uh, with human rights. Nevertheless, I think there's still a lot to do, including in identifying that that assessment then includes a gender dimension. Finally, I am addressing the question of the listing and delisting of terrorists by the Security Council and its 1267 committee that focuses on Al-Qaeda Taliban, forms of terrorism. Here also I am recommending that the listing and delisting procedure should include a gender assessment as part of it.